uh, you have a choice to either pick to do a midterm or to do a major project, uh, right, for the other 50%. So 50% is final and 50% uh, either a project or a midterm. As for the midterm and the final, they will be kind of a slight modification of the problems uh, that uh, I'm going to during the course assign. Uh, Alex, to there's, you. there's a lid in front of it. Sorry? There's a lid in front of the lens. I should have known a little bit better. Thank you for noticing that. So. Let's see, where was the... Oh, there there we are. There Excellent. Okay, so either 50% uh, major project or 50% uh, midterm, and then for everyone 50% uh, final. Now, the midterm problems <coughs> and the final problems, as I said, will be uh, slight variations uh, of what I'm going to assign as homework problems, and uh, you are welcome to consult with your peers on these homework problems, um, how to solve them. Uh, none of them is terribly difficult. <coughs> when it comes to a project, uh, the scope uh, would be something uh, about uh, of the size of one chapter of the textbook. So browse through the textbook um, um, and uh, uh, kind of look what the extent, including what's uh, uh, called there, um, how is it called, uh, advanced material, I think, or something like that. Because uh, the textbook is structured as answer to, I think, 20 questions. And you have uh, now short answers and long answers. So you have to match uh, a, a long answer. Uh, what kind of things can you do for uh, the project? As I mentioned, uh, the least useful thing is to do something just to satisfy the requirements of the course. So I would urge you to uh, do your project on something that you are really interested in. Uh, you dream to have a startup for that or something like that. So you can put your dream in this project, and then, then I can steal it from you. Okay. <laughs> um, so, um, or perhaps uh, you are planning to do honors thesis, uh, and you have an idea what you want to do for your honors thesis, so you can then just start working on your uh, honors thesis, providing that it has significant uh, algorithmic aspect, uh, either theoretical or implementation. So for example, it's, uh, some students in the past were proving uh, uh, theorems uh, about uh, some algorithms that we are going to uh, cover. Um, some students were designing uh, modifications of the existing algorithms improvements. Uh, some students uh, just chose to do a implementation of a sophisticated algorithm, say a recommender system, and then test it on uh, uh, real uh, life data. So it can be, it can range from purely theoretical all the way to um, purely implementation, it, and it has to be a well-rounded whole, right? Something uh, that. Uh, someone can read it and uh, learn something about the topic, right? So I don't give uh, uh, limitations on a minimum this many pages, maximum that many pages. In fact, a student who, um, who got 100 uh, had a project uh, uh, written on two pages. Uh, but the, pro the two pages were the proof of convergence of an algorithm uh, that another student of mine in a previous year designed, uh, but uh, he couldn't prove its convergence, and then this lady proved the convergence, uh, and in fact, uh, both the algorithm first and then the proof of convergence were published uh, 
I forget, I think in transactions or parallel and distributed systems. There are all the papers are on the web, on the web page, right? So try to make it as useful to yourself as possible, right? As I mentioned, if you are planning to do 40-year thesis in something that has significant algorithmic component, uh, this is a good way to do an early start, okay? And as I mentioned, the scope should be approximately one chapter in the textbook. Okay. Any questions about, uh, yes? Um, for the content of the exams, is it the same as 3121, where the midterm was only the first half and the final was only the second yes. half? Yes. Yes. Uh, wait, wait. Because if you did the project. Then. Yeah, if you do the project. So, no, the final has to be com Okay, so. Uh, that's now an interesting founder on the <laughs> I thought I solved the problem, but now we have this uh, dichotomy. Um, so I guess I will. Oh my, yeah. You're the troublemaker. <laughs> okay, let me think about that one. Uh, Oh gosh, because of you guys, I will lose even this little hair left. <coughs> okay, so I'll think about that. It might be comprehensive. Oh, yeah, I guess it. Oh my. Okay, let me think about that. Uh, any any other questions that you may have? Yes. Uh, so for the project, can we work in groups? Okay. Yes. So you can work in groups, but then the project has to be kind of major, major project, meaning uh, approximately of the size of two chapters in the textbook, right? So more substantial, but yes, it's possible to work in pairs. Huh? Okay. Okay, so any other questions that I might be able to answer? Okay, if not, let's go back to what we were doing last time. So uh, let's just first uh, review uh, this uh, problem and slightly generalize it that we did in 3, 1, 2, 1. So you, had, uh, you have a factory that has, uh, say, uh, uh, have many lane, uh, lines of, uh, of production, right? And uh, the production consists uh, of uh, n many uh, steps, each done at a particular workstation, right? So both, I mean, all uh, assembly lines, how do you say assembly line or assembly lane? Line. 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 Good. Okay. So, uh, these are your, uh, so this is the first all the way to the uh, end stage of construction. And uh, for each station, Right, so this one would be station S, uh, all, and the stage of construction is I, and uh, J is the line, uh, the index of the line. So say this is uh, J, and this is the uh, i stage. And so uh, for uh, uh, and uh, S I J, uh, it takes uh, uh, say uh, T I J amount of time, say minutes, uh, to finish uh, the height uh, stage of construction, stage of uh, uh, cons 
abstraction, right? Now, you don't have to assemble a product on just one line. Uh, you can also change, right, from one line to another line. And because, uh, say, the machine has, uh, machines are not uh, equally uh, modern, right, the fo uh, factory was expanded uh, in stages, so uh, it is not the case that all of these uh, workstations do the job uh, with the same amount of time. All of the times uh, can be different, uh, right? Uh, and if you decide to <coughs> change from stage uh, from station IJ uh, to station I plus one K, so this will be station I plus Y, but this will be K uh, assembly line. Then you have a cost, so it costs, uh, uh, say, um, tau um, uh, so let's see, this will be tau um, I, I stage uh, from, uh, from say, uh, uh, Jade assembly line to Kate assembly line uh, time uh, to <coughs> move the product Uh, from station um, S uh, I J uh, to uh, station uh, S I plus one uh, K, right? So you have to do the assembly in the same order, so you can only move from I, from a station that does I stage of job into another station on another uh, line that does uh, um, um, uh, that does job I plus one, right? You have to keep the order. So the problem is. Uh, uh, find uh, uh, the fastest uh, way to assemble uh, a product. Okay. So, if we did exhaustive search trying all possible trajectories, uh, how many cases would we have to consider? How many ways are there to assemble the product? If there are n lines and uh, uh, n stages of construction. No. Hmm? M to the power of N, because all the choices are independent, and at each stage you have M many choices, so you multiply by M. So total number of uh, uh, paths uh, is. Uh, uh, m to the power n, right, which is equal to to the n times uh, log m. So this is uh, uh, exponential, right, in the number of uh, stages, and uh, 
in the log of uh, <coughs> oops, did I, uh, yeah, log <coughs> of two, not two, of n. So uh, this is obviously intractable to do it by brute force, right? And uh, <coughs> um, the way how to handle these problems, it's uh, just ideal for dynamic programming, right? Uh, what would be the sub-problem? So, so let's say, um, okay, we used S, let's call uh, problems uh, uh, P. Uh, so would be, what would be, what uh, uh, sub-problems do you propose to be, for us to consider? Way to get to the station of line, vertical line B. Okay, so uh, P of I uh, would be the fastest way to finish <coughs> uh, first I uh, jobs. What's the problem with this choice of a sub-problem? Is it true that uh, uh, P of I plus 1 is uh, obtained from PI? Yeah? Why this is not the case? I don't know which station it finished, uh, which line. Right, because the problem here is this. Uh, say you consider lines i, I mean the jobs i and i plus 1. And say the an optimal strat uh, trajectory up to stage i is this. So then you simply see what is the fastest way to move to, you know, um, to the station i plus 1, so you would then look at the minimum of transportation time plus time to finish here and take a minimum. What's the problem with this? Is this a correct recursion? No, because you see, it might happen that you can actually do the job up to i in a suboptimal way, but then you have a very short the cost to move to this station is much smaller than if you move to any of these stations from this, uh, right? So the optimal way to get here must, might be from a suboptimal position here, but with very low transportation costs. So this is not a good idea. Uh, Essentially, what we have, to, we have to be able, in the recursion step, to do an exhaustive search, right? So how do we solve this problem? How did we solve that problem? What do we consider instead? Huh? Yes? Can you say Kate's job on the high line? Exactly. So instead, we will have sub-problems. Uh, it's a 2D dynamic programming. So uh, it's I uh, say J is uh, the fastest uh, way to finish uh, the job, so the first uh, uh, I jobs, but uh, such that uh, uh, the height job is uh, done uh, on uh, uh, line uh, J, right? Now we can have a correct recursion. I'm really worried about my ammunition. I have to go and uh, 
buy myself some chalk because our school office didn't have chalk. So obviously your tuition is not enough for us to buy enough chalk. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so how do we then um, solve the, how would you uh, solve the sub-problems Pij? So, uh, so uh, the fastest way, maybe it's, uh, uh, we should say it in a more, the uh, shortest time. Right? So what would be then P, I, J? How do we define it recursively? Yeah. P, it would be the minimum from all exactly. P, I minus 1. Exactly. Mid for all um, uh, M that go between 1 and, M. One and capital M. And then here we will have P. I minus one um, M um, plus time, which we call tau uh, I um, uh, I minus one. I minus one. Very good. I minus one, uh, and then it was from uh, M. No, no, uh, yeah, yeah, from M to J, plus the time T uh, to finish the job, I to job on uh, station J. Right? So this is the previous to finish I minus <laughs> one uh, jobs, but searching through all possible endpoints plus the cost to move uh, at stage a mi i minus 1 from the mth line to the j line, plus to finish the i job at the j -th line. And now notice this allows us to do exhaustive search on the in recursion step. And now this problem disappears. It's easy to see that. Uh, um, optimal solution for this must come from optimal solution for that point because if there were a better way to end up at that point, right, you would get, uh, I mean, if there was a better way to get to that point, you see from which point it came, and then, of course, this would contradict uh, the choice at the recursion step. Now, and that's the reason uh, the reason why I give this problem in 3121 because the solution, this is essentially the solution to return with decoding uh, uh, algorithm. So let's talk about return with decoding algorithm at the moment. So what is the return with decoding algorithm? The best example is uh, a speech recognition, right? You can think of uh, speech recognition as the following uh, problem. As I speak, I articulate phonemes. So a speech is a sequence of phonemes, including the mute phoneme for the break between the words, right? So you have phonemes, and my speech is uh, So what would be uh, uh, an example? Uh, how would you factor uh, algorithms into forms? Now, the problem with this is that there is no unique consensus what the phonemes are, even for a particular uh, language. Uh, is it? Al one forum or is it A L Al A and then L? So let's say it's uh, uh, an A Al uh, G 
E. Well, what would be for E? Algorithm TH, the sound that I cannot pronounce. Uh, mm, algorithms, right? So, to make things simple, there is so called international phonetic alphabet that kind of collects all possible sounds from all possible languages and has a symbol for each of them. So, I assume that we have a consensus about uh, uh, that. Uh, but, especially when someone like myself speaks, right? Uh, you first of all, you don't have access uh, to the phonemes that I am trying to articulate. Uh, you only have access to the manifestations uh, of the phonemes that I am trying to articulate, which are a particular waveforms that have certain properties, for example, in the spectrum. If you take fast Fourier transform here and you look uh, at the distribution of the energy in each bin, uh, uh, then uh, some you can do feature extraction uh, in a very many different ways. And then you know that, uh, uh, you see, each phoneme can produce a, uh, an observation or auditory, let's call it observation when it's actually auditory, right? But we, it, is not, uh, it is not unique manifestation because when I say I, do, is this from this or is this from this, right? So the bottom line is that uh, uh, for every phoneme, you can find a kind of a probability that it caused such observation. What would be an even better example for that? Um, well, I gave you a homework. You were at night in a, in a backyard uh, in California. Uh, you just moved to Google and um, uh, in California, you have a whole bunch of raccoons uh, and uh, some fewer number of possums, right? And from a distance, especially for a guy um, uh, who, who has bad vision like myself, in a kind of dusk, if you see an animal, uh, you might think that you saw a raccoon even though it was actually a possum and vice versa, so any occurrence of an animal can cause different observations depending on lightning and so forth. Uh, moreover, not all um, states are equally probable, right? For example, if there are um, uh, if there are twice as many raccoons as possums, then probability that the first person, that the first animal that you see will be a raccoon is twice as much as probability that is a possum, right? Moreover, if you, if this person, if this animal was a raccoon, because raccoons tend to live in packs, right? Probability that the next animal that you will see uh, that it will be also a raccoon is larger than the probability that uh, uh, you will see a possum. So, simi so similarly in speech recognition, you don't have insight what phonemes I am trying to articulate. Uh, you only have, say, a microphone that captures the sound waveform, and then you can do some feature extraction, right? And then for each phoneme, there is a probability uh, that uh, uh, it will cause uh, an observation with such features, right? 
for uh, some um, observation it will be far more likely, right? Because uh, uh, it's very unlikely that if I'm trying to articulate uh, um, uh, if I'm trying to articulate A, A, right? Uh, and uh, that you uh, record a waveform that is uh, most commonly associated with uh, some B, right? But for example, uh, like, uh, um, you know, my wife, she cannot distinguish between what were the sounds uh, She's Korean, so her auditory system is trained on different phonemes. But you get the idea. Uh, moreover, uh, the sequence of phonemes, if you have this phoneme here, the probability of the next phoneme is not, the, is not independent of this phoneme, right? Because uh, um, um, what is the probability of, uh, so let's try to s find something really ridiculously like uh, the phoneme, uh, two phonemes that are very unlikely to come one after the other. What would be an example? X, Y. X, Y. <laughs> I'll tell you a joke. A Polish guy goes to see an optometrist and the optometrist asks him, can you read the first line? And the Polish guy says, can I read? I know the guy. <laughs> <laughs> so the likelihood of phonemes in different languages is different. So the way to think about speech is that this is a Markov chain in which probabilities of the transition are known. How would you find? Well, you take a big dictionary, a phonetic dictionary, which you can find online, and then simply count for each phoneme uh, how many times the next phoneme was all of the, for each of the available phonemes, right? you understand what I'm saying? Right? If you have a dictionary and you have a, 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 a phoneme that corresponds to A, and uh, you can then count uh, in how many words the next phoneme was L, Al, Alexander, for example, right? How many times is after A, a M? Uh, and so forth, and you can make a table of uh, probabilities uh, for each of the phonemes. So now you will have a collection of the phonemes, or states uh, of Markov chain. So that will be S1, S2, as many as you have the phonemes, let's call S uh, capital M. Right? And then you have probabilities uh, if a phoneme has occurred, what will be probability, eight phonemes has occurred, what will be the probability that the next phoneme will be the jade phoneme in your dictionary? Right? So notice this strips totally the machinery from the notion of meaning. And that's good because semantics is the hardest thing to for the machines to do. Machines are good in formal rules of inference, uh, even if they are probabilistic. So <clears throat> you can simply count uh, how many times after eight phoneme, the next phoneme in the word was the jade phoneme, and normalize it uh, <clears throat> with the number of all pairs, and you get the probability of the transition. <clears throat> so. And of course, not all the probability, the phonemes that start a word uh, are not equally distributed, right? Uh, for example, uh, uh, 
what would be an infrequent uh, x as starting whatever is the sound corresponds to x. Uh, all right, so the point is that uh, uh, if you simply count all the first phonemes in all words, how many times uh, each phoneme appeared, you can, uh, and then normalized by the total number of words, you can find what is the probability that uh, uh, this uh, phoneme uh, occurs as starting phoneme. Do you think that that's a good, would you really take a dictionary and then uh, count uh, uh, how many words uh, start with a phoneme, the particular phoneme, in order to find the probability of starting phoneme? Do you think that that's a good idea? No. No, why not? Because not all the words are equally frequent. So what you should do is you take, for example, a few books, scan them for all the words, and classify phonemes according to how often they appear as the first phoneme in the world. And you wouldn't believe it, but that's how Markov chain was born. Because Markov was uh, bored at some point, <laughs> and he tried to do precisely such analysis, I believe, from, uh, was it Pushkin's poems, or maybe it was Dostoevsky's novels, uh, but he really took a piece of work and did uh, analysis of the frequency of initial phonons and what is the likelihood of uh, uh, given a phoneme, what is the probability that the next phoneme will be this one, huh? right? So what do we have in a speech? And by the way, uh, speech, I probably told you, uh, speech recognition via what's called hidden Markov model, which I'll explain in the moment, was revolutionized by a guy and his wife who was actually developed this in their garage. And, and uh, it's a kind of sad story because at the end uh, they didn't make any money out of out of it uh, because they were not terribly business savvy, right? Uh, so uh, so this is <coughs> what a hidden Markov model is. A hidden Markov model is simply a Markov chain to which you have no access, but you know its statistical features, which means the probabilities of initial phoneme, and the probabilities, uh, I mean, uh, not phoneme, the probabilities of initial state, uh, for example, um, right, uh, the state could be a particular phoneme, and probabilities of transitioning between the states. But you don't have access to a particular run of the Markov uh, chain, which would be uh, a sentence, for example, that I utter, right? You know that this is sequence of phonemes, <laughs> but you don't know what I was trying to say. But for every, you know, uh, even in your brain, uh, for every phoneme, there is a probability that it can be misconstrued as, uh, uh, by your inner sensation, uh, to, uh, with, um, it, it can give you several impressions.